All right. Then let's go with the second episode. Uh, what do we do here? since I had played uh, since the last time. And I usually like to set myself up, you know, kind of back at home so that I know um, when I load back in, all I have to do is kind of re-familiarize myself with my base, you know, how far along I am in the game, uh, and sort of remember what my current goals are. Um, though I have tried to get better about leaving myself, you know, journal entries or messages that at the very least, I don't know, they don't have to be roleplay centric, but, you know, tell you, like, hey, I'm low on fuel, so the next time you load in, try to get some fuel, or something like that. Uh, just because it can be, you know, days, or, or even a week or two before, uh, or rather between, um, uh, playing the game. myself with everything. Nothing too exciting here. Finish off the cooking books. Uh, really, you should try to read everything. Yeah, good call. Point six is probably enough to for sure uh, kind of guarantee that with the next cooking show you'll get to level three. But you don't want to over waste your reading time because once you get to level three, the book will um, have no further value on your experience. Um, so pro probably a, a good call there to, to stop right there at that point six multiplier. That that should pretty much guarantee it. You know, I should probably know the numbers a little better after playing the game so much, but a lot of it's just, I don't know, by after so long, a lot of it's just kind of by feel. Which is probably incorrect. Okay, the slow process of moving the reading upstairs. That's, that's wise. Not that you always have to retreat to the upstairs, but having that option rather than not is probably the stronger position. Um, I mean, just in a complete vacuum, of course, upstairs is better. Uh, but in most practical gameplay, I'm, I'm probably safe here completely now that I've cleared out this area. And, and it is only the second day, so maybe by you know, the end of the fourth day or so when I've really cleared out the area. Um, I, I think I go on a bit of a killing spree in a day or two, I forget but I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, that said, um, you probably don't always need to go upstairs, but um, it's it's worth it to sort of have on the table. So if you can prioritize moving your things upstairs, then when you have that option, you simply have the option to. You don't have to do any additional work. It's just on the table for you. Right, you need to start crossing your houses off. That's what happens when you don't uh, take notes. <clears throat> or am I looking for something specific? Do I do I think I need something? What am I looking for? No, I guess I'm just kind of clearing the house. You know, just just clearing everything nearby. Closing curtains. It really doesn't cost you anything. And in the off chance a zombie was going to be attracted by the light, you've now turned that off. So I don't know, either turn off the light or close the curtain. Same same thing. 
I mean, the lights will go off at a certain point anyway within 30 days, so I guess, uh, um, you know, after 30 days, it doesn't matter anymore. Sure. Again, there's really no downside to that. There might not be an upside, but maybe it saves you that one straggler zombie sort of you know, spawns into your zone because you had left for up to 16 hours on the stock apocalypse so that allowed uh, the zone to be unseen for that amount of time which allows for the zombie to respawn and then given that the light might have attracted it um, it, it just saves you that that very ra uh, rare edge case possibility um, so it, it, more of a um, kind of more of a minor a minor chore than an actual uh, task, I would say, because you know, cooking, cleaning, eating, and not cleaning, but cooking, eating, um, carpenting, these are these are real tasks. Yes, we're, we're very heavily overloaded with stuff, but with very high strength, I, I, you almost will never fail those uh, fence hops, so definitely worth it there. <clears throat> I, I do need to take off those firefighter pants, though. That's just a whole lot of extra weight that's not helping me. somewhere. What do I what do I want? What do I need? I can't be sure. Uh, separating cold food from non perishable food. Or refrigerated food. Probably could have just put all that in the freezer, but it, I don't know. It doesn't matter. You're going to eat it all soon enough anyway. So, it's Louisville. I genuinely don't think that food is the, uh, the thing you need to be micromanaging. slowly clearing the house out. Padded pants are always good. You, you should try to get some padded pants for winter. I, I, I don't think there's a like a better, easy to get pant that will keep you warm in the winter. Uh, quite like padded pants. Plus they have a little protective factor. Which is nice. But they're very warm. Um, which in the winter here in Kentucky
grab it all. Still no backpack whatsoever, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, so I can get back in. <laughs> Smart. That's sure. Just in case you need to run back in from that angle to your hole. Boom, boom. Good job. system frequency. <laughs> I think I've gotten, I don't know, five or six radios at this point. I want to say I checked a couple of them in the last one, but maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm incorrect. I think I have more than a handful now. <clears throat> Second tick will do it. The, ne the next one. Oh, oh, sorry. The third. Okay. So I probably, honestly, could have just not read the cooking book, or just read it until I got the uh, the first multiplier, which I believe is 0.3. Um, that certainly would have done it. Cause yeah, now I'm. I mean, you have to wait to get to the second level, or uh, get to the second level and be earning the third level or any skill uh, to read the second level cooking or any skill book. Um, but I probably also could have just cooked all that meat or something. I don't know, there might have been a better thing I could have done there. Cooked all that meat and then read, you know, cooking too to try and get a little additional cooking experience before noon uh, for the carpentry show. Although looking back on this, I, I think I touched on this last time, um, I don't think any of the skills that the life and living give you are as valuable when you play in Louisville because all of those things you don't all of those skills are sort of solved by just the massive amount of resources in Louisville I mean most problems are of course um, but it, it really does make it so you don't have to worry about cooking or farming like, I, I don't think a character in Louisville will have to farm until uh, probably several months have gone by um, and even then he probably wouldn't have to farm probably still go and get food somewhere. It would just be a matter of convenience, I guess, at that point. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that Louisville kind of offers you. Um, I don't know why sometimes you fail that jump animation, but I, I know it's a percentage thing, but even so. Strength 10, fitness 10. I really feel like that percent should be, you know, a fraction of one. Point one percent or something. Yeah, maybe that was my point one, my one in a thousand. Um, but back, back to what I was saying, uh, the, the number of resources in Louisville probably do make it so that the, the skills that you learn from life and living, and you know, cooking and carpentry are kind of always useful, but the other ones, fishing, farming, trapping, and foraging, that you learn from the 6 p.m. one, um, uh, survival with Dean. Survival exposure with Dean. Uh, sort of. Oh, nice. Hey, I guess if you wanted some guns, um, those skills are almost certainly completely useless uh, for a very long time in Louisville. They, they'll always have, I guess, some value. I mean, you get right down to it, they'll have some value. <clears throat> Close the curtains. Another radio, maybe this time I'll get it. A couple more books. This is all useful. Oh, now I'm, I'm impatient. I'm like, just give me the frequency now, dude. Nope. Take the battery. Nope. No, you take the whole thing. You're gonna dismantle it later. I guess I would. That is something I would do. Sure. Just fully clearing each hole. Did I not have a 
screwdriver. No, I, I had a screwdriver. I really didn't need that, but you know, just nice to have multiples. Four plungers in that house? Oh my god. Uh, this is the worst song. The one with the doo 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 doo. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll hear it again in a second. Th this is the worst one. Here, I'll leave it. Uh, just, just to kind of hammer it home. Oh, and you can't erase it. Well, okay, that's fine. So yeah, that that's that's the whole song. Increasing musical tension, but at that point you're just so you know, kind of weary of it that you're, you're it's, it's not any kind of satisfying relief. You just wish the song would end. Okay, sure. It's day two, going door to door, getting everything all together. This isn't a bad plan whatsoever. It's a little slow, but it's also Louisville, so kind of this is your bread and butter. This is what you will be doing. Like, in some respects, you could be trying to go to, uh, say, a hardware store early on, but, like, for what? You already have... It, it's Louisville. There's very little... The more I think about it, Louisville kind of solves for a lot. So, like, what would you go to a hardware store on the off chance you'd get axes so that, what, you can do carpentry? I don't... I mean, axes are good weapons, of, of course, but as, as a tool goes, you don't need sledgehammers, you don't need axes. Um, you know, those things are nice. They are niceties. But in Louisville, I feel like they're even... Weirdly, I just I don't think they're nearly as necessary, especially the sledgehammer. Once you've cleared out your area and you're staying in it, no one is going to respawn in it. No zombies will respawn in that area. So, um, oh, I buy the what is that? The Gentleman's Club of Kentucky or something? I'm trying to <laughs> very risque. What is it? Yeah, the, the oh no, that's a different one. There, there is a Gentleman's Club here in. in uh, Project Zomboid in Louisville. Oh, I'm gonna go back and get my stuff. Hey. Actually, this is good. Yeah, get those trash bags. You should get those trash bags. You... Still, not bad. Get, get your stuff. And check the radio while you're here. Let's see, do I remember to do that? I surely hope I do. scratch me because I hopped over it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's stupid. <clears throat> no. I wish I could have seen that because it was right in front of me. Otherwise I wouldn't have just tried to drag through those bushes. Go get the gas from the other one, dude. You can go grab the gas from the other one. Yeah. 
I mean, it's only a little, but you don't have to go very far. Yeah, you only have to go, like, I don't know, 100 yards or whatever. I don't know. It's hard to tell in this game. 200 yards. It really doesn't seem very far. Oh, just... You've already messed up. You should have just filled up your van and went home. Yeah. Yep, just... His bags are packed. He's ready to go. Just put him in the van. Send him home. Perfect. Yep. Just go home. part of what I'm looking for while I'm in Louisville are places that are surrounded by high fences on at least three sides. Four would, uh, of course, be ideal, but obviously when it's four sides, there's always going to be an opening of some kind for like a gated community or, or some. There's always going to be some uh, mitigating factor, um, but that's uh, just having those, uh, you know, some kind of high wall that zombies can't destroy uh, is so worth it. Definitely something you should try to I don't know, not prioritize. Well, yeah, pri prioritize while you are looking for where you're going to set up base. Actually, the nap meta is pretty strong. I mean, depending on your setup, um, you can sleep like two or three hours and, and get quite a lot of uh, rest points or whatever it is in this game. I forget. Um, fatigue. Sorry. Uh, fatigue points back.
you're reading the thing I said you could have done 20 minutes ago uh, in game, or about a half an hour ago in game, which, again, not the biggest deal, but uh, sort of like I said last time, you know, the these first 24, and now we're past that, we're in the first 48 hours, although we might have just, let's say, 24, now we just passed 48, um, so now the time is a little less uh, precious, so to speak, but during, you know, during those first 48 hours, the time is really on your side. 24 hours, you know, there won't be nearly as much zombie buildup. Um, none of the food will have discarded, or rather, uh, rotted yet. Um, so it's, it, the first 24 hours definitely is when everything is on your side, and you should try to take advantage of that. If you, you know, I, I don't think you should even sleep during the first 24 hours, is, is kind of what I'm thinking now. You can go ahead and get to being very, very tired during that first day, and it's probably quite worth it. Uh, especially if you find, you know, just go ahead and find some vitamins or uh, coffee or tea bags or something, and you can make something that'll offset all that fatigue from, from that first day, uh, and then kind of keep going, which I, I, I don't do here, even though I have access to coffee. I'm thinking about doing it, which is why it's in my inventory, but I, sh I should have kind of already done it. I'm already very tired. So I, I, I should be using that instead of, am, am I actually going to go to sleep? Yeah. I, I don't think... Um, I think that is now something I would call a mistake during the first couple of days. You, you can probably, especially here in Louisville, I think I've already found you know, plenty of things that will keep me up. Uh, vitamins, or coffee, or tea. Um, so it's really not necessary for you to sleep uh, when you have those things. So you just shouldn't. You just shouldn't. As uh, again, especially during those first couple of, uh, first couple of days. Let's see, though, I only slept for about four hours or so in-game, maybe maybe three or four hours, so that's, that's not the worst thing ever. Oh. Mm. Yep, just turn around and leave. Good call. Really nothing you can do here. Well, you could check in it. Yeah, you could go to a different house. Especially with all the fences, the, the chances of a ton of zombies coming in is quite low. Check the corner. Oh, that's, oh, that's very smart. Actually, this is all pretty basic, you know, in the sense that, you know, fundamentally, this is what you should do. An alarm is going off right near your base, you need to... Keep an eye on kind of you know the front of your house. Make sure you don't come back home to a horde of zombies. Well, let, let's see. Well, what? How long does an alarm last in game? Was that 20 minutes or so? I think it was only 20 minutes. That's that's really not. Um, that's not so so long. That's pretty manageable. Although the M36 might be the one to grab, but, but frankly, you don't really need to be grabbing guns yet. Oh, but you do want to take an arcade back home, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do. <clears throat> Are you going to equip it in your offhand? Yeah, good job. That lightens the load considerably. And yeah, then you can still pretty much loot, I mean... You're not that overweight now anymore. Even at strength 50, or rather, especially at, sorry, strength 10, uh, you can go to, you know, 50 weight and, and still jump over those fences pretty much every time I've noticed. So I, I don't think it impacts that. Um, uh, at least once you're at strength 10, it doesn't seem to. You're just, I guess you're just that strong. Uh, and fit. Strength 10 and fitness 10. You, you should really just always try to start with those. Or, or strength 9 and fitness 9. I mean, I don't know. High, high strength and high fitness is... Um, it's just very, very worth it. Everything you do is slightly easier and better and faster or uh, costs you less endurance or allows you to carry more of it. Just... I mean, if you didn't already know, if you haven't already, you know, play the game and 
experienced it. Uh, you, you should definitely prioritize your strength and your fitness numbers uh, when you're creating your character. Training them is, is quite slow. You, you could probably go from, say, a start of like three fitness and three strength to, say, seven fitness and seven strength in a, you know, probably in a few months in game. It wouldn't be terribly difficult. Uh, but that said, you could also just start at 10 strength and 10 fitness anyway, or 9 strength and 9 fitness uh, anyway, and train every other skill much, much, much faster than you would train your fitness or your strength. Uh, every, every other skill trains much faster than fitness and strength does. I guess maybe with the exception of like nimble and uh, some of the, I don't know, light footed and sneak, you can power grind up though, so uh, for, for the most part, um, I'd say fitness and strength are kind of very, very prioritizable um, during your, your first couple of uh, characters, at least until you get a hang of the game and you kind of know where you can take, oh I never, <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> never got rid of that, uh, at least until um, you know, you're, you're, you're a bit more confident with the game and you know what you're giving up when you go to low strength and low fitness. Uh, because it really will change the way you want to play the game. And and I don't, I mean, you know, I've played with low strength and low fitness, I've played with high strength and high fitness. It's just, uh, I, I don't, it's worth it going for the better strength and fitness numbers every time. You can always afford it in your character build. There's a way to make it work. something there? Am I going to put a TV there? Oh, okay. And the art goes there, sure. Oh, I'm going to grab a fridge, huh? Yeah. Because it's always easier to grab a fridge from your neighbor's house once you've cleared everything out than to like move all the food in your fridge and pick up your fridge. Why don't you just go grab the neighbor's fridge and put it upstairs? And you know, uh, any other books or anything, if you want to grab those, sure. Just clear, just clear it out, yeah. Oh, and a secret spot, but nothing in it, darn. Kitchen, kitchen, uh, stationary. No, kitchen junk. Oh, the the shell suit stuff is also really good for when you have like windy, stormy days. Um, I don't know. You can learn all about the clothes, I guess, kind of just just by playing. But you know, they make sense for the the purposes that, that you would think that they would work for. I don't think any clothes have ever surprised me by their behaviors. I'm like, wow, the balaclava, um, or sorry, the ba yeah, no, the balaclava, um, or the ski mask, as some people would call it. Uh, wow, it makes me warm, or, or something like that. No, no, all the clothing uh, is pretty predictable in the way that you would anticipate the clothing to be. Uh, going back to clothing, I, I really should be wearing some just like normal pants or something by now, because as you get warm you get tired faster. Take the bolt out. Uh, so you kind of want to reduce getting too warm uh, consistently. Hmm? Hello. Right there. Wait, you trying to place it? Yeah, so it doesn't overlap your own home. <laughs> like when you bring it up just to okay well or 
what everything would look like, sort of as you see the symbol on the map. I feel like I was looking for a particular symbol there and I couldn't find it. I know mods add some, but I, I don't usually play with those, so I, I must have been, uh, I must have been pining for a modded symbol there. Upstairs in your bedroom. Sure, why not? It's kind of nice. I, yeah. I don't know why we don't do that in real life. So I'm going to try and get a new guy in here. Nope. You could just select them all and unfavorite everything all at once. But, yeah. Yep, transfer everything. Truly transfer everything. There you go. And now you're just going to go... Is that you're 
walking a little far. You could probably just go ahead and die. Kind of at a certain point, you're stealing from the time of your next character. I don't know. Again, these are all very small details that I'm just sort of nitpicking at. Just go ahead and... Just go ahead and... too far away. Okay. Grab some stuff and go. I never did get a backpack with that first guy. That's a dang... That's a heckin' shame. And I never took off those firefighter pants. <laughs> I don't know, not like that's... That's not the biggest deal, but... Shucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombies everywhere. Check your garage for a tool, bro. Go get like a hammer or a pipe. of food and just take off. You could probably just jog there and drink some soda or something. going to jog all the way to the new place. You, you don't need... You don't really need anything. A backpack would be nice.
some sort of a water source. Maybe grab like a yeah, anything that can hold water. Well, surely you can do. Hopefully, you can do better than that in this kitchen. Saucepan instead of a bowl or any. Oh, maybe a bowl. Uh, there we go. Soda. Grab some soda. Good call. take the generator. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah, I don't have a weapon or anything, so... It does put me a little overweight. Well, I'm gonna stick to the roads. I don't know about that, but... Yeah, okay, I dropped the generator. I'm like, screw this. if it's gonna happen you'll know uh, for the uh, helicopter that is Get out of those firefighting pants. <laughs> it's slowly starting to bother me more. Like an unresolved melody or uh, the chirp of a smoke detector with a low battery. Did I just drop them? <laughs> Drink them. That guy just slammed a whole, you know, Coca-Cola in like three seconds. I mean, I know in the game it's a little bit longer, but still, he just he slammed a whole soda in like three seconds. Sure. Oh, Two-car garage. You almost never see those in this game. That's That's a rarity. <clears throat> or is it just a house? I don't know. I'd have to go investigate, but uh, that looks like a two car garage to me.
friends, what are you doing? Just go home. Just jog to the base. Just, just go home. That's, bro. You're doing great. Man. And you got a sack? Sure. I don't know if you'll ever actually do any upstairs farming, but if you wanted to, you can. Don't give me a bag. If you really want to push it, you could get some food. Justify this new character, a, a new car would be good. But, um, I don't know, I feel like I could have been home already by now. Um, I think I'm gonna miss that, that carpentry show, which again isn't as important, but still, in terms of overall prioritization, I could probably have just jogged on home by now. I've been there, and been you know, thinking of the next, uh, I mean, I still probably would have wanted to get a car. I would have been doing it after checking in at home. That feels just so much safer. <laughs> Make sure your home is safe. so they'll have more stuff in them. Uh, oh, I think I'm taking a little pause here to go get some water. Uh, so yeah, if you can while you're in Louisville, I mean, you got plenty of houses anyway, it's not like you're on a shortage of loot. But um, if you can, prioritize the rich houses. Uh, definitely no downside to that really whatsoever. But, but, you know, they're still just houses, they just have more stuff in them. Go ahead, go ahead and loot them. And I don't even think they have more... Uh, statistically any more chance of having a zombie in it except for the same rate that you know because there's more rooms maybe there's more zombies but I don't even think a rich house you know uh, has an increased rate of that by any means I think it's still just the same rate although, although you know I'm just sort of thinking about the game it would make sense if you know, rich houses had more people in them, or rather more zombies in them, because they had more people in them. Uh, maybe not all of them, because, you know, rich people might have fled the city or whatever, but, you know, some of them might have been hosting extended families or something. It's, it's so, you know, oh my gosh, we're all gonna go to my uncle's house because the apocalypse is happening. Um, so I can see some of the rich houses, you know, lore-wise, having 30 zombies in them, justifiably. I make it for the TV show. Douche. Alright. And I get water. Alright.
speed it up a little. Sure. Yep. 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 Double barrel. Oh, in perfect condition. That is a good weapon. The the double barrel shotgun is a uh, like uh, well, both of the shotguns are really quite good, honestly. Um, I mean, it used to be the case in this game that kind of only the shotguns were good. Uh, that that's no longer the case. There are you know, kind of I think all the guns are good now, but uh, definitely the shotguns have always been good and probably always will be. Home. Is that what you're finally doing? You're finally figuring it out? When his bags are packed, just take him to the airport. Send him home. Am I gonna shoot this one random? No. <laughs> Thought I was getting ready to just. <laughs> Blast one zombie. You really shouldn't, I mean, I don't know, if, if uh, kind of in my situation, the gun is the only weapon you've really found so far, uh, and you only have three shotgun shells, you know, save, save that. Don't just, uh, don't just use it. Not even that uh, uh, tired. My endurance is still. I mean, it looks like I maybe hit 90 out of 100 there. It's sort of that uh, pinkish white bar about in the middle, uh, just to the right of the blue bar. Um, here, it's this one. Oh, but jumping a fence. Hey, actually, jumping a fence costs quite a bit. That was a lot. I don't think I've ever <laughs> looked right at it while I'm jumping a fence. That was a lot. Oh yeah, this is where uh, I'm in the park. There's an antique stove here. Do I try and grab that right now? That's crazy. I don't think I have a hammer. I can't do that. There's no way. Or do I just at least go verify it? I think I go verify it. I'm like, no, I know there's a stove. Oh, don't. Side. Like, okay. No, I just I missed it by one. I know I know where it is now, but I don't think I knew where it was uh, when I was playing. Is that an antique stove? Yeah. Somewhere around here is an antique stove. Yep, you're hundred percent right. You're right by it right now. <laughs> it's in that park center building. But yes, note it and move on, because you, you can't grab it. You're almost there. <laughs> do I just spend the rest of this time jogging home? Let me see. I think that's what I do, huh? I just, I just jog on home. Is anything interesting? Yeah, I pause a couple times. Oh, let's see. It's only a few minutes. Not to say, oh, does anything interesting happen? But I, I don't think I fight any zombies or fire my gun or anything, so it's a safe safe and steady jog home for the next couple of minutes. I mean, it might be worth it if you could kind of plan it out to uh, 
fire your gun kind of right at the edge of the sound where it would help to clear out your base but without getting it overwhelmed but that's I don't think that's really necessary by any means but theoretically that, that probably is uh, a component of really good play kind of playing at that, that uh, using all of your resources to their maximum uh, level Oh, another uh, barricaded home. Sometimes there's an unbarricaded window or an unbarricaded door on a barricaded home you can get in. I think that was what I was looking for there. I'm just gonna mark it. Hey, yeah, I'm getting into the note-taking habit. That's good. Boom. Yeah, no, that's. I like this. I didn't say fair weather, a true patriot. Vote fair weather, a true patriot. Well, I don't think I'll be voting for fair weather, probably because voting isn't a thing anymore in Kentucky, unfortunately, because of the zombies. So I don't know, maybe fair weather would have been great. But we'll never find out. Okay. You know where you are roughly, right? No, I mean, that is kind of confusing in here. You need to hop. Yeah, you need to hop over two streets. extent probably of the sound range. I think it's a couple hundred tiles. Or cell, uh, not cells, no, tiles. That is the terminology in this game. You're gonna fire it again? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. What's the difference between three shells, two shells, and one shells? It's not gonna... I don't know, I feel like this was maybe a little bit too close to home, but maybe... You know, maybe it is the right distance, and maybe it's also the right angle, too, considering how the streets are laid out. It would have just pulled zombies uh, kind of in perpendicular lines so that they would, um, you know, heading to the sound, they might just kind of bypass uh, my base. So I, I, you know, I'm a little torn on it. I feel like it was it's a good idea to try and use those shells, but I don't know if that was the right place or time. You need to go over one street. You're one street too soon, brother. Oh, you want to hop the fence and get there? I just want to look at all the nice houses. That's, that's fine too. And hey, there's our home. Looks safe. It hasn't been burned down by uh, zombies that have figured out how to use fire. That would be the worst. <laughs> hey, it did the thing. I, I know it can do that sometimes, but it had the 104 AEBS frequency. Let's see, do I remember? I'm like, I think it was 104. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Well, at least I got it. No, that's weird though. I, I guess sometimes uh, a radio, when you place it, it can lose uh, a saved frequency. Because I've, I've definitely noticed that before, where a radio... I mean, you guys saw me with it. I was listening to the AEBS frequency while walking around at about 9 a.m. today. And then I go to place it, and for some reason, the, the frequency deletes itself, or, I don't know, the radio forgets it, whatever happens. Oh, I guess that's the end of the video. Okay. Well, that was, that was a good one overall. Oh, a nice friendly, what are we saying, a friendly bye? Friendly goodbye.
Where did that go? All right. Well, hey. Have a uh, thanks for joining me, and I uh, hope you guys have a great day. And um, you know, good luck with your uh, good luck with your Project Zomboid character. I hope you guys can uh, you know, succeed, get through winter, uh, get nice and overweight, so that by spring you have a goal again. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, just enjoy the game. Have a good one, guys.